So students, obviously if you click on this video, you're on step three. You click here. And um, the videos that you needed before are here in case you want to know how to put transitions or if you still are having trouble starting the project, which is kind of late. Um, you might not be able to finish on time. You have today and then uh, next week we'll have one more class day to work on this. And then you're going to have to finish it for homework. We're not completely done with the project because an STL is going to see this and they're going to have to give you feedback and you're going to have to go back and fix some things if you're missing stuff. But today what you need to do is this number 7 and 8. I made it bold at the bottom here. So here's the instructions on what to do. Step 3. It's down here. So slides 10 and 11 should be a bar graph on earthquakes along the ring of fire using the data from NGSS. Make a category of earthquakes of the magnitude 2 through 6. In slide 11, explain your, your data and which kind of earthquakes are most common. Okay, what does that mean? So I haven't put it yet, but over here I'm going to put this link here. When you click on it, it's going to take you here. You're going to make a bar graph. A bar graph on what, you say? A bar graph along of the earthquakes that happen along the ring of fire. So down here where it says uh, USGS, you can click on it and it takes you to this picture. And I've seen most of you working on this. You go to latest quakes. Then instead of being just California, you're going to uh, tell everybody how many earthquakes happen along the ring of fire. So press the little negative button and you get to this menu here. Here on the left is the list of all the earthquakes that have happened in the last two to three days along the ring of fire. You can see some of our 2.5. Some of them are five. See the usually the bigger dot there. So these are pretty big dots too. Let's see this one, 5.1. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to create a bar graph with these um, numbers here. So what you do is you take, uh, you click on this link to the, create the bar graph. So remember, if I'm going too fast, open a new window and try it step by step. Where it says start making a bar graph. How many bar graphs do you need? So you look at your earthquakes, the strongest one seems to be, scrolling down the list, a 5. 5 is the strongest, so you're going to need 5 sections. This might change as you do this because of course uh, there might be more earthquakes uh, when I'm doing this and you start doing it. So the name of the section, just number it by the power of the earthquake. So let's say 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's put 6 just in case. Okay, click on next. I forgot to mention that here where it says section, click on magnitude, that means how strong, let's say it's a magnitude 2, and then write magnitude for all of them. So magnitude, magnitude 3, magnitude 4, magnitude 5, do that for all of them, you get the idea. And then here, where it says the numbers, here's where you put the information, I just was putting some random numbers to double check, but let's say here. Um, how many earthquakes that are twos? That includes two all the way from 2.0 to um, 2.9. After that, it becomes a three, right? So let's say here, here's one 2.5. Here's another 2.8, so that's two. Here's another one, three. Here's another one, four. So keep counting. Let's say it was just four. You would say it's four magnitude uh, two quakes. Let's say it's six magnitude three quakes. You get the idea. So how many magnitude 4s, how many magnitude 5s, how many magnitude 6s? Now click next. I have to put something on one entry. Now click next. Then the title of your chart should be Earthquakes Along Ring of Fire. Everybody have the same title. And then just put the date that you're doing this. Everybody will have a different date. You have different classes, different days. I'm making this video then to 10th. So next. Make your bar graph vertical. Click next. You can label the uh, the axis, which is uh, these are called the axis here, the x axis and the y axis. For the x axis, where it says x axis, call it magnitude. That means uh, the strength of the earthquake. So add the word strength. And then a frequency on the y axis. So that's going to be here along this axis. X is down here. We're going to learn about this more in seventh grade math. Frequency is how often, so make sure you write the words how often, put parentheses, and that's what the word's going to be added here. So the bar graph will show you how strong it was, and you will see um, how often it happens. Let's say it happens 38 times, 44 times. Click on next. Show value on bar, yes, click on next. You can decide what colors you want the bars, you can change the colors here. 
uh, the label colors here. I'll leave that up to you if you want to change them. Next. How big the graph is, you can just leave it like that. And click next. Make bar graph. Once your bar graph is here, you can take a, a screenshot of it. Remember, screenshot is command shift 4. And you can open it up. Make sure it's all in the picture. And then take a screenshot of it. Then you will have it in your background here. Minimize this here. Let's see what my bar graph is here. My background. My bar graph is right here. So you can just click on the picture and then drag it to your presentation. So if my presentation is here. Remember if this video is going too fast because I do not realize that it's a lot of steps. If this video is going too fast, just make sure you pause it or do it side by side. Um, that's the best way. That's my best advice for you all at all times. So let's say you want to put your bar graph here. So let me create a new slide here. Put it there. And then, of course, let it go. And remember the instructions are to... Let me go back to the instruction here. To make the bar graph, which should be slide 10. So slide 10 should be the bar graph. Let me highlight it here for you. Um, you made the slide, that's the slide 10 and slide 11, which is the same idea. You're going to just explain what you did. Um, you should say, well, uh, earthquakes magnitude blank are most common because using my data from my bar graph or um, make the uh, three or four sentences there. Um, you can use a picture on both slides if you want, but you need to have the bar graph in slide 10 for sure. Okay? And slide 12, briefly, should be a conclusion. What did you learn from doing this? What should people that watch this, if your parents come in and other people watch this, what should they learn? You're supposed to uh, inform them and educate them, so what should they learn from your presentation? Obviously, you did a lot of work with pictures and, and information, and um, tell them what the, they need to remember, like the takeaway, like what's the last thing they should remember as they see your presentation. Okay? That is the end of this video. Have a great day.